Just a quick update and funny story before this video. Um, I ended up getting a replacement board, or buying one at least, uh, about an hour after I finished recording this video. So, go figure there. But, uh, I don't know. Hopefully it's still interesting either way. Just wanted to start this video with a quick little legal disclaimer. Silverstone was kind enough to send me this FX600 Platinum Power Supply as a review sample with no other expectation than make a video on it. And this is not the official video. Not that there really will be an official video, but um, unfortunately, as I said in the previous video, my motherboard I bought has a bad memory slot. But I realized, you know, maybe I should at least, before I return it, uh, do some testing because I want to see uh, if the proposed config that I'm going with is going to work, which it should. I've already halfway tested it with some, some ESXi fun, but I have all my <laughs> drives haphazardly hooked up here and uh, uh, the RAID controllers. The only thing that's really going to be different about this, obviously the case, but um, I am using a low profile 10 to 50 Ti, not a full height. And then I don't have a 10 gig network card in there, but um, that's not a super high priority just because I uh, don't really foresee myself needing 10 gig anytime soon. But I did do a little testing when I first got the power supply with a different uh, motherboard just to make sure it worked. Um, not that I really expected a brand new power supply to be bad by any means, but you know, you gotta test stuff. But I'm kind of curious to see um, how quiet this setup's gonna be. It's not quite the same. The other thing I guess it'd be different is there's two 120s in the front instead of 480s. But in preliminary testing, just to verify functionality, I was impressed with how quiet the fan on that power supply is. So, let's power it up. Uh-oh. <laughs> that is my fault. I should have removed these. I 3D printed a bunch of drive rails for this case because this case was going to be my uh, new NAS case. The so Slager was nice enough to send me their CX3702 to review in a previous video I did. But uh, let's try that again without fans crunching. So the CPU fan does start up a little noisy. I'm not sure what that other fan in here is. It might be the GPU fan. No? Oh, <laughs> it's one of the front fans. So I think we're gonna, oh, I think it booted already. Let's see here. Yeah, that fan is obnoxious. Is he trying to boot? It's 140 watts, oh there we go. And off you go. I did not realize how bad that fan was because I'd never used that one before. This case in general, um, I never got around to using. So let's eliminate that one, because this is going to be way too loud. And, oh, duh, <laughs> I fired it off, that was the switch. There we go, that's a lot better. And, right now I'm pulling 138 watts, it's doing its post sequence. And all that fan noise you're hearing is coming from that little fan there. Plus that fan is the other issue. I don't remember if I said that in my video, but the fan on this heatsink is also kind of bad. It kind of rattles. I'm not sure why, but it's annoying. You can also hear a little bit of the uh, 1050 
TI fan as well. But those will both spin down once it's done posting. We'll pull 131 watts right now. And it should boot straight into ESXi if, uh, if uh, everything goes right. It's gonna get in on that uh, hot meter here if I can <laughs> get it right with the world. Here, we'll just move the camera. Post sequence on these server boards is not very fun, that's for sure. It takes a while. I don't have the keyboard hooked up, so if it needs anything from me, I am out of luck. The monitor's still on, right? Some of these dumb monitors, it's hard to tell if they're on or not. <laughs> I'm just being impatient. I am curious to see what the uh, overall power draw is going to be, because this is the first time I've had a meter hooked up to it so far. And this, as I said, isn't going to be the official case, because uh, I'm going with the Slager 2U, which is going to be way more compact than this Rosewell 4U case. But uh, I think I'm going to let this do its post stuff and then uh, hop on back to see what power utilization looks like. Well, I'm freehanding it. No more tripod. <laughs> I uh, got this all booted and running. Apparently the uh, motherboard does not like my uh, Perk H310 that's been cross-flashed. At first I thought it was because the uh, SM bus pins were taped, but um, I removed that and still wouldn't see the drives and it was acting weird, so I moved that and it boots right up and um, let's see here, just want to make sure there's nothing on my laptop screen that I want to share, <laughs> but uh, I have two VMs that are running uh, Cinebench with eight cores each, so I'm maxing out the CPU basically. Um, As you can see, I'm using 100 and 11% of my CPU. And uh, I'm only pulling 192 watts, so uh, I really overestimate how much uh, power I'm going to need. I'm not hitting the solid state drives, so let's see. These uh, six SAS drives can pull 10 watts under load. These four 2.5 inch drives can pull 7 watts each under load, so that's. Uh, it was uh, 60, around nine, another 90 watts. The GPU is not under load, so that's another 75. Well, it's probably pulled some idle, so we'll just call it 70 watts, make an even number. It's 160 watts. Uh, one more RAID controller, one more stick of RAM. It's another 175 watts total that I'm not accounting for. So I am actually golden on my power budget. I could even go a higher in CPU almost, but I don't think I'm going to. So the cool thing about this power supply, which still kind of blows me away, if the box says it or not. Um, I don't see, I don't see anything on the box. Oh, there it is. So 600 watt continuous power output at 40 Celsius operating temperature rated for 24-7 operation. Which makes this a fantastic power supply for a server because, yeah, you, you want to be able to run that thing hard 24-7 without having issues. Um, but uh, I think I think the most I'm going to hit this for is uh, 400 watts, which is extremely unlikely because I'd have to be, like, pushing everything to the max, basically. Um, which... I can't even do, sadly, with these SAS solid-state drives because uh, the the SAS cable I'm using doesn't have connections to all the pins, basically, that SAS drives have. But, uh, yeah, this is uh, pretty sweet. Power consumption might not be so sweet. I don't know. It's under an unrealistic load right now with Cinebench, I mean. But, um, 
yeah, and it doesn't feel overly hot. I mean, it's definitely getting hot. Heat pipe's not that hot, though. I mean, the heat pipe's warm to the touch, but it's not, like, burning my flesh. The power supply... It's mildly warm. Honestly, the power supply would be cooler if it was uh, in a proper enclosure with airflow. But right now I have it sitting on this piece of foam because I don't want to get all scratched up. I want it to stay looking pretty. But, uh, yeah, and I, I... I... If you asked me if the fan on that power supply was spinning... I honestly couldn't tell you. I think it is. I feel warm air coming out. <laughs> but uh, this fan is the loudest fan in the, in the whole um, setup here. And then um, I think I can hear the GPU fan as well. Um, this is more of a grindy rattling noise versus this just being a fan noise. Oh, Santa Bench just finished. And the 80 millimeter fan I put here just to keep the um, solid state drives manageable. That one's not too loud. You can hear it if you uh, put your ear up to it. And this 120 is reasonably quiet as well. But uh, I don't know. At least I get to do a test run before I send this board back. Um, I'm really sad that memory slot's damaged. I don't know. Maybe I could show it a little better now. So you see right there where it's cracked and then it's kind of pulled away. I suspect what happened is somebody tried putting the uh, memory stick in and they weren't paying attention and uh, they twisted it like sideways. Only reason I say that is because I've done it before, although I haven't damaged the socket. Usually what you end up doing is you bust off these locking clips, which is not great. But, uh, at least this is a start. Um, yeah. I'm really sad that this motherboard, though, man, that sucks. Because, uh, basically, if uh, that motherboard was 100% functional, the only thing left that I'm waiting for is my Sliger case. I need to order that still. Um, I need to determine what bracket system I'm going to use to mount this cluster of drives. The other four drives are going to go on top of the power supply. There's a little cage that goes there right above it in the uh, Sliger case. Um, and now I'm waiting for a uh, PERC H330 since the server board doesn't like the H310. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. And then I guess when I order my motherboard, I'm going to need another heatsink as well. So, <sighs> yay. <laughs> I almost wonder if I can get away with to swapping it, though. I don't know yet. Because the air coming out of that's not very hot. I almost wonder if this heatsink's efficient enough where it just doesn't need a loud, high RPM fan. But, uh, yeah, I just... I'm going to be sad that I can't uh, build this anytime soon. But, um, oh well, that's the update. At least I got to show off uh, this power supply I'm really excited about to do a review on. Um, like I said, I'm really grateful that Silverstone sent me this as a review sample because this is going to be perfect. Um, the other thing that's cool is so. It has two uh, PCI Express 8-pin connectors. Um, it's outside of my budget, because oh, I'm already way over budget on this technically, but um, it's outside my budget, but I could get a uh, 4060 low profile to put in this server. But the other thing I could do with these is I could uh, buy a converter to um, convert these into uh, EPS 12 volt so I can run EPS 12 volt off there. Otherwise, this uh, eight pin connector does have a split four coming off it. You can't see it, I don't dare pulling it right now while the server's on, but um, I thought about using a power supply extension cable to go from there all over there. I think this really only matters 
if I'm running um, a lot of like cards that run high high power draw. So if I had a bunch of if I had all those card slots populated with like we'll say cards that are pulling 60 watts each, well that's 360 watts power all those slots need. So then that supplemental four pin probably is necessary. I don't know what the official output of the um, EPS 12 volt 8 pin is, but considering the NVIDIA Tesla GPUs can pull upwards of uh, 225 watts through that, I would guess that by itself is 225 watts. But uh, yeah, at least uh, something to be happy about while I wait for another board to pop up. But uh, either way, hopefully that's interesting and thanks for watching.